Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Bosa with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Welcome to this edition of Integrative Movement Inside. Today is Tuesday morning. Hey, thanks so much for being on. I truly appreciate your support. I appreciate all you do for your communities because right now we need leaders more than ever. We need individuals that are going to step up and lead their communities and help them address the most common issues that are or impacting the older adult population, especially if you work with older adults, because today's topic is all about balance. Many of our older clients, one in three actually over the age of 65 will fall. And in those individuals that fall, one in three of them to one in four, one third to, or I should say a quarter to a third of them will actually die related to the side effects of that fall, pneumonia and other respiratory and cardiovascular health factors. In fact, my own mother fell many years ago and she never walked again. She literally fell, broke her hip, and never walked again for the last 10 years of her life. So she, most people don't last if they don't walk again, but my mother did last. She's a strong, you know, she was a strong-willed individual and she did survive. However, it wasn't a good quality of life because she was basically bedridden and, and or chair-ridden for, for the rest of her life. So one of the great things is, however, you can do so much as a health and fitness professional to help address some of the most common causes of balance issues. One of the most common things we see, so first I'll address the most common thing we see that contributes to balance issues, or I should say one of the underlying causes, and then we'll show you a very simple exercise, which is gr what's great about this exercise is it will work right away. You don't have to wait for days or weeks uh, or months for it to work. It actually can improve how someone walks and balances in one session. Now, it doesn't mean it's all they need and there are no other factors you need to work on and they don't need to build confidence up in the, this pattern, but it's so effective that it actually works in one time. Now, let me just share with you a common reason why so many individuals actually fall. One of the things that happens to us as we age is we lose the ability to move through the transverse plane. When we think about walking, walking is really all about transverse plane motion, rotation, and then ultimate counter rotation to use elastic and potential energy to propel us forward with less effort. And that's why if you watch somebody walk who is very, has very good alignment and control, it has worked on their alignment and control and their breathing their entire life, it looks very fluid. And a great way to visualize this is looking at a Kenyan runner versus like a not good runner. So the Kenyan runners and African runners, they generally win them uh, marathons and they're, and they're really approaching like that two minute marathon. So they're very, very efficient runners. And when you look at a marathon or someone that does a marathon in four to six hours, again, very cool that anybody can, can walk in or run a marathon. So I'm not taking anything away from those individuals, but if you compare the strategy of somebody who does a marathon in two to three hours with someone that does it in four to seven hours, much different strategy. If you look at the four to seven hour marathoner, usually they are using a lot more effort. And if we look at our older adults, now turn that to balance in our older adults, think about your older adult when they're walking. No longer do they have this nice transverse plane motion and counter rotation. They tend to start to what we call weeble wobble. They start to walk like this. They're moving much more through the frontal plane versus that transverse plane. So what happens is, as a step, they weeble wobble over, or they, but basically what they do is they transfer their weight over top their support leg. And then as they step forward, they have to quickly translate their weight back to the other side. So they have this very weeble wobble type of appearance because they lose the ability to rotate their hips as well as their trunk and spine. So I'm going to address today, I'm, I want to address the hips in a very simple exercise, like I said, that will work right away. Now you'll have done your assessment, you'll done have done your myofascial release because that will all help make this easier. So what I want you to do is you can do this with me if you're watching at home or in your office, put your hands upon your pelvis. So here's a very simple, easy assessment, is rotate your hips to the right, come back to center. So always come back and center up, feet together, and then rotate your feet to the left. And see if you have one side that's a little bit more restricted. So back to center, left. For me, it's a little bit more restricted on my left side. So also you can check very quickly, Simply single leg stance and get a sense, does one side, do you have to work a little bit harder to stand on that side? And if you can see, very nice, easy for me to stand on my right side, no control, control issues, no gripping, easy to stand. Left side, I gotta think about it a little bit more. You see me transition my weight a little bit more and now I even have to grip up my hip a little bit more. So oftentimes, not all the time, but, <clears throat> but oftentimes, 
The side of restricted hip motion is also the restricted side of control. So here's a very simple pattern. Like I said, you would have done yourself self-assessment and then you would have done yourself tissue release to help mobilize the hip or the around the quads, the hamstrings, and or the ankle foot. Now, one of the great greatest patterns that you can do to improve hip mobility and control, because it's really about not only mobility, but the control you're helping your client develop is a split stance hip hinge. So you've already mastered, your client should have already mastered the bilateral stance hip hinge. So now we're going split stance hip hinge. So nice long spine, stack the rib cage over top of the pelvis. And from here, I'm going, to keep, I'm going to keep my pelvis facing this direction. So straight forward to the forward leg, and then I'm going to step back, okay? So from here, hands roll upon the pelvis, and then it's rotation of the entire cylinder over top the femoral head, staying nice and square to that forward leg. So I should feel a nice good stretch in that glute and hamstring of that forward side. And then I breathe in to come upright, breathe out, hinge, making sure my body weight stays up and over top my foot. I'm gonna shift away from the camera a little bit more so you can see. So again, long spine, stack the rib cage over top of the pelvis, hands on the palm, upon the pelvis, hinge, and then come back up. So one more time, hinge, the weight stays up over top of the foot, not back here like this. So I'm gonna keep my weight over top of the foot here. So my hip is almost over top of my ankle or as close to the ankle and foot as possible. And then just do a couple more repetitions, hinge, and then come back up, and then one more time. So we do have our client do two sets of 10 repetitions or so. And now let's come back up and just do a quick recheck. And again, that's just one set of, maybe I did six repetitions or so. Let me check my range of motion again. So turn right, come back to center, turn left, and that feels easier, looser, okay? Check my single leg stance. Right side was good. Right side still feels good. Left side, much easier. Now I'm not gripping as much. It's much easier to be here. I don't have to shift my weight as much to get my weight on the left leg. And that's with one set. If I'd done myofascial release, if I'd done a couple more exercises or a couple more sets of that, in addition to a couple more correctives, it would have been even better. And that's how quickly and easily you can change rotation and more importantly, the control your clients need to improve balance. So I hope this video served you. I hope it helped explain to you a very common cause of balance issues in your older clients and this very simple strategy for helping your clients improve balance. If you're looking for more information, I'm joining my friends and colleagues over at DCAC Fitness Convention in a couple weeks where I'm teaching an entire 90 minute session on balance. We'll look at more of the assessments on how the hip, the knee, the ankle and foot, as well as the rib cage actually plays directly into balance. I'm gonna have Mary put the link next to this video. I'm also doing a session on, I've got a couple sessions, one on the psoas and glutes as well. And then my fellow anatomy geek, Jill and I are doing some anatomy around posture, how to help, how to understand posture and use that to help create better postural strategies in your clients. So we've got a lot of good stuff coming for you in that event. So if you're interested, interested in joining us, feel free to look at the link associated with this video. I'll also be back on Thursday sharing an additional strategy to help improve balance in your older clients so you can be the solution for your current clients and attract more individuals that need, want, and will pay you for your expertise. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode. This is Dr. Evan Osar. Go out there, empower your clients, educate your clients, and be the leader that they need and your potential clients will be looking for. Thanks so much, have a great day.